the iron stove from the yellow fairy book <clears throat> once upon a time when wishes came true there was a king's son who was enchanted by an old witch so that he was obliged to sit in a large iron stove in a wood There he lived for many years, and no one could free him. <laughs> At last, the king's daughter came into the wood, because she had lost her way and could not find her father's kingdom again. She had been wandering around and around for nine days, and at last she came to the iron case. A voice came from within and asked her, where do you come from? Where do you want to go? She answered, I have lost my way to my father's kingdom, and I shall never get home again. Then the voice from the iron stove said, I will help you to find your way home again, and in a very short time, if you promise to do what I ask, I am a greater prince than you are a princess, and I will marry you. <clears throat> then she grew frightened, and thought, What can a young lassie do with an iron stove? <clears throat> but as she wanted to get home to her father, she promised to do what he wished. He said, you must come again and bring a knife with you to scrape a hole in the iron. Then he gave her someone for a guide who walked near her and said nothing. But he brought her in two hours to her house. This was a great joy in the castle when the princess came back and the old king fell on her neck and kissed her. But she was very much troubled and said, Dear father, listen to what has befallen me. I should never have come home again out of the great wild wood if I had not come to an iron stove to whom I had to promise that I will be back to free him and marry him. The old king was so frightened that he nearly fainted, for she was his only daughter. So they consulted together and determined that the miller's daughter, who was very beautiful, should take her place. They took her there, gave her a knife, and said she must scrape at the iron stove. She scraped for 24 hours, but it did not make the least impression. When the day broke, a voice called out from the iron stove, it seems to me that it is day outside, then she answered. It seems to me that I think I hear my father's mill rattling. You're a miller's daughter? Then go away at once and tell the king's daughter to come. Then she went away and told the old king that the thing inside the iron stove would not have her but wanted the princess. The old king was frightened, and his daughter wept. But they had a swineherd's daughter, who was even more beautiful than the miller's daughter, and they gave her a piece of gold to go out to the iron stove instead of the princess. Then she was taken out and had to scrape for four and twenty hours, but she could make no impression. As soon as the day broke, the voice from the stove called out, It seems to be day outside. Then she answered, It seems to me, too. I think I hear my father blowing his horn. So, you're a swineherd's daughter? Go away at once and let the king's daughter come. And say to her that what I foretell shall come to pass. If she does not come 
Everything in the kingdom shall fall into ruin, and not one stone shall be left upon another. Well, when the princess heard this, she began to cry. But it was no good. She had to keep her word. She took leave of her father, put a knife in her belt, and went to the iron stove in the wood. As soon as she reached it and began to scrape, the iron gave way, and before two hours had passed, she had made a little hole. Then she peeped in and saw such a beautiful youth, all oh, shining with gold and precious stones, that she fell in love with him on the spot. So she scraped away harder than ever, and made the hole so large that he could get out. But then he said, You are mine, and I am thine. You are my bride. You have set me free. He wanted to take her with him to his kingdom, but she begged him just to let her go once more to her father, and the prince let her go, but told her not to say more than three words to her father, then to come back again. So she went home, but alas, she said more than three words, and immediately the iron stove vanished and went away over a mountain of glass and sharp swords. But the prince was free and was no longer shut up in it. Then she said goodbye to her father and took a little money with her and went again into the great wood to look for the iron stove. But she could not find it. Then she sought it for nine days. Then her hunger became so great that she did not know how she could live any longer. And when it was evening, she climbed a little tree and wished that the night would not come because she was afraid of the wild beasts. When midnight came, she saw a far-off little light and thought, Ah, oh, if only I could reach that! Then she got down from the tree and went towards the light. Same little old house with a great deal of grass growing round, and stood in front of a little heap of wood. She thought, Alas, what am I coming to? And peeped through the window. But she saw nothing inside except a big and little toads, and a table beautifully spread with uh, roast meats and wine, and all the dishes had drinking cups that were silver. But she took heart not. Then a fat toad called out, <clears throat> Little green toad with a leg like crook, open the door wide and have a look. Who is it at the latch that shook? And the little toad came forward and let her in. Then she entered and they all bid her welcome and made her sit down. They asked her how she came there and what she wanted, as toads do. Then she sat and told them everything that happened to her, and how, because she had exceeded her permission only to speak three words, princesses, the stove had disappeared with the prince, and how she had searched a very long time and must wander over mountain and valley till she found him. But the old toad said, Little green toad whose leg doth twist, go to the corner which you wist, and bring me the large oak kist. And the little toad went and brought out a great chest. Then they gave her food and drink, and led her to a beautifully made bed of silk and samite, on which she lay down and slept soundly. When the day dawned, she arose, and the old toad gave her three things out of the huge chest to take with her. She 
would have need of them, for she had to cross a high glass mountain, three cutting swords, and a great lake. When she had passed these, she would find her lover again. So she was given three large needles, a plow wheel, and three nuts, which she had to take great care of. She set out with these things, and when she came to the glass mountain, it was so slippery that she stuck the three needles behind her feet, and then in front, and so got over it. And when she was on the other side, she put them away carefully. Then she reached the three cutting swords, and got on her plow wheel, and rolled over them. At last she came to a great lake, and when she had crossed that, she came to a beautiful castle. She went in, and gave herself out, of, out as a servant, some old poor maid that would gladly be ex engaged. But she knew that the prince whom she had freed from the iron stove in the great wood was in the castle. So she had taken on as a kitchen maid for very small wages. And now the prince was about to marry another princess, for he thought she was dead long ago. In the evening, when she had washed up and was ready, she felt in her pocket and found the three nuts the old toad had given her. She cracked one and was going to eat the kernel when, behold, there was a royal, beautiful dress inside. When the bride heard this, she came and begged for the dress and wanted to buy it, saying that it was not a dress for serving maid. Then she said she would not sell the dress unless she was granted one favor. Namely, to sleep at the prince's door. The bride granted this because the dress was so beautiful and she had so few like it. When it was evening, she said to her bridegroom, That stupid maid wants to sleep by your door. If you're contented, I am, he said. But she gave him a glass of wine in which she had poured a sleeping draught. Then they both went to his room, and he slept so soundly that she could not wake him. The maid wept all night long and said, I freed you in the wild wood out of the iron stove. I have sought you. I have crossed the glassy mountain, three sharp swords, and the great lake before I found you. And will you not hear me now? The servants outside heard how she cried the whole night, and they told their master in the morning. When she had washed up the next evening, she bit the second nut to crack it open, and there was still more beautiful dress inside. When the bride saw it, she wanted to buy it also, but the maid did not want money and asked that she could sleep again by the prince's door. The bride, however, gave him a sleeping draught, and he slept so soundly that he heard nothing. But the kitchen maid wept the whole night long and said, I have freed you in a warden from the iron stove. I sought you and crossed a glassy mountain three sharp swords, and a great lake to find you. Now you will not hear me. The servants outside heard how she cried the whole night, and in the morning they again told their master. And when she had washed up on the third night, she bit the third nut, and there was still a more beautiful dress inside that was made of pure gold. When the bride saw it, she wanted it. 
and the bridesmaid would only give it to her on condition that she could sleep with the prince outside the prince's door for the third time. But the prince took care not to drink in the sleeping drop. When she began to weep and to say, Dear sweetheart, I have freed you from the horrible wild wood from an iron stove. He jumped up and said, You're right. You're mine, and I am thine. And though it was still night, he got into a carriage with her, and they took the false bride's clothes away, so that she could not follow them. <laughs> when they came to a great lake, they rode across. When they reached the three sharp swords, they sat on the plow wheel, and on the grass glassy mountain, they stuck the three needles in. So they at last arrived at the little old house. But when they stepped inside, it turned into a large castle. The toads were all freed and were beautiful king's children running for joy. Then they were married and they remained in that castle, which was much larger than that of the princess's father. But because the old man did not like being left alone, he went and fetched them. So, they had two kingdoms and lived in great wealth. Well, the mouse is run and my story's done.